Hello everyone, Danny here today, as promised in the last video, to talk to you about the next three books in Philip C. Quantrell's series, The Echoes Saga. Now, I'll provide a link to the previous uh, video that I did on the first three books in the saga, in case you're, you haven't seen that and you want to go back and see that because you're thinking about starting into this saga, which I very definitely recommend. But the three books that I'm going to be talking to today are, and in the correct order, The Fall of Neverdark, Kingdom of Bones, Age of the King. These are narrated by Stephen Brand, who does an amazing job as a narrator. And I love the fact that so far all six books are narrated by Stephen Brand. There have been no narrator switches, and I hope and pray that they keep Stephen Brand through the entire saga. I hate it when they switch narrators in between. Now, in the previous three books, it ended with Asher dying and what you felt like was a complete trilogy. This book, the, these three books, this trilogy doesn't end feeling like a conclusion to the story. So in the previous video, I mentioned to you that my understanding was this was supposed to be a nine book saga broken into three trilogies. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, there's definitely more books in this saga to come, but these three books, they have a storyline that ends. So you could say, yes, this was a trilogy. The, the threat to the world has been defeated by the end of this series, but it doesn't feel like it's been defeated, defeated. More like it's been momentarily stalled and there's an even greater threat that's been introduced that, that isn't anywhere close to being resolved. There's a huge question mark at the end of these three books that leaves you wondering what is to come. It doesn't end on any kind of a cliffhanger or anything like that. It's more like the storyline. I mean, this is one of those book series that, that once... Me, my sons, my nephews, we, we got caught up in it. We could have long discussions. As long as we were all at the same point in, in the books, we could have long discussions about what we think is coming, what's coming next. In, in the first three books in the series, you had major, dramatic paradigm changes to your views of the world in this series. In, in the next three books, you have paradigm changes, but they don't feel as dramatic. They, they don't feel nearly as dramatic, and there aren't that many. What you have in this book, you, your main antagonist, the crow, you have a lot of paradigm shifts about him, who he is, what he can do, where he comes from. That changes quite a bit throughout the book. You, you're you always caught by surprise by what he does. This is not a good book series. If you're the kind of person who always likes to be able to see ahead in the storyline and know what's coming, yeah, it's a book series for you. If you're the kind of person who likes to try and, oh, I think this is, I think this, and then be caught completely by surprise, this is the book series for you, because that's the way it was with all of us. Me, Jonah, Justin, Caleb, we all were constantly caught by surprise. There were some things that, that we did get right. That's just odds. You're going to get some stuff right. But there was more stuff that we got wrong. Hang on a second. Uh, starting to get a dry throat. Real quick, like before I forget, um, not a book for children. The... This series here, um, I myself would have been more okay with my kids listening to. My wife would not have. But the problem is, if you hadn't listened to the first three books, these three books 
wouldn't make as much sense to you. In the first three books with the amount of sexual torture and everything else, which they don't want to detail in those three books. Like I, like I've said before, I don't like things too dark. I don't like, especially on a sexual aspect, I don't like things really graphic, but the first three books you've got one of the, the the main characters who gets captured and is imprisoned and is used as a plaything for quite a while and while it's not graphic it's graphic enough that the kids would have known what he was talking about you don't have that in this book you do have in this book the crow captures someone who he thinks is supposed to become the king of the world and he wants to mold this person into who he thinks the king should be. And he does that through torture. But it's not the sexual torture. It's not graphic in any sort of way. It does have a darkness to it. But myself, I think the boys would have been okay with these three books. I'm sure there was... I honestly don't remember uh, if there was language in this or not. There's been so much going on lately. By the way, good news. Uh, it does not look like my wife is going to need surgery. They're going to do a growth stimulator. What and I mentioned before, she had the accident, broke her right leg in two places and her left foot. Left foot's healing fine. One of the breaks on the right leg is healing fine. The other break has not seemed to be healing, but they're going to try growth stimulator instead of surgery. And hopefully that will work and we will avoid surgery with her. I had an MRI. And so we're still waiting to hear back on me as to whether I will need surgery again. So we'll see. Um, but that's good news there. Good news on that front. So uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, the, the, the crow, he's, he creates this darkness. I think boys would have been okay. I guarantee you my wife would have been upset at me for letting the boys listen to these three books. I wouldn't have done it anyhow because it wouldn't have made sense without the first three books. And there's no way I would have let them listen to those first three books. So now back to the story. This, um, the, the, the first three books had Elijah as, or not Elijah, um, Asher as the star of that series. At the end of that series, Asher died. Now, me, Jonah, Justin, Caleb, we were all unhappy that Asher died because he was our favorite character. And there was going to be no more Asher moving forward. You, you killed off the, the, the main guy that we were rooting through. I mean, we loved Asher. Now he's dead. Same time, we weren't all that upset because... Asher's kind of a, a kind of a, a, a tortured soul emotionally and mentally, and he gets to die a really good death. So it's kind of like Triss in the um, oh that young adult series. You know she she dies that it got made into a movie. So I can't think of it right now. I'm getting old. My memory's kind of shot. But anyhow, Triss dies at the end of her series. It was good for her character. It, it was a good death for her. I actually liked it. A lot of people really hated it. I felt that way with Asher. So you've got a new list of characters. This series starts 30 years later. And what's interesting is, is book one, me and my boys, we all had the same favorite, Asher. This book, we've got different favorites. I meet Doran Heavy Belly. I get how can Doran Heavy Belly not be your favorite character in this book series? He's awesome. And he's a dwarf. I love dwarves. I mean, hey, right over here. I love dwarves. I play a Chaos Dwarf team in Blood Bowl. I mean, come on. They're dwarves. And, and he's like the epitome of, of the dwarf. He loves battle. He loves drinking. He's, he's like a short, stocky Viking is what he's like. Only... A good guy kind of a thing. Anyhow, um, they, Vegon was a popular with them. They loved Vegon. Now, I really liked Vegon and I liked his character and who he is and who he becomes, but he was definitely not my favorite in this book by any stretch of the imagination. This book leaves you feeling like the story's unfinished. So... It leaves a lot of discussion out there. If 
you're looking for a book series for a book club. If you're like me, where you've got a group of family members or a group of friends, where you like reading the books and discussing them, this is a great book series for that because you never know from book to book to book what is coming. And that happens with this book. You're introduced to a whole new cast of characters. Characters from the old book are brought and put into this book. And there's some things that happen that you were like, okay, I was unhappy that that happened in the last book. But look, that's been changed. So now the reason I was unhappy about it, I'm no longer unhappy about it. Didn't see that coming. And you can have a lot of discussions about this book, about the direction you think the storyline is going. I mean, I'm, I'm six books in. And we still, me, me and the boys, we still have long discussions. We are all in agreement. There is a direction that if this story goes in that direction, which is the direction it's pointed, if it continues going the direction it's pointed, we're going to be really disappointed and almost to the point of where that direction could ruin this book series for us. If it keeps going in that direction and concludes in that direction, it will, for me personally, it will definitely ruin the book series, which lets you know there's twists and turns coming up ahead. So what's going to cause those twists and turns, huh? Is the crow going to prove to be fallible? Because right now, everything is going exactly as he said it in motion. And if it continues, and if the crow gets to be the ultimate winner by creating the world he's trying to create, then I will be highly, highly disappointed in this book series. So is he finally going to prove to be fallible? Or is it going to turn out that he had a different plan in mind and he only fooled you into thinking he wanted to go this direction and really up ahead, it's going to lead to this switch kind of a thing. It's that kind of a book with all of the changes. Yet we've had some great discussions about where is this? What do we think's coming? What do we think's happening? I, I can think of very few books that we've been able to have in depth, as in depth of discussions about as this book series. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you like my channel, subscribe, turn on notifications. Come join me in my audiobook journey. But no matter what else you do today, make sure that today you listen to at least one really good audiobook. And I highly recommend Philip C. Quantrell's Echoes Saga. Not for children, though. No. And book seven is available for pre-order. I've already pre-ordered it. So at least the next book is about to be out. Thank you. Have a great day.